Space Commission. May I introduce the table to you? We have in the middle our Chief Observer, Mr. Fabio Mazzino. Then uh, on the far end, we have Andrea Schiller, head of uh, the delegation of uh, the members of the European Parliament. And next to me is our Deputy Chief Observer, Beata Martin Rosovic. I open the press conference and hand the floor to our Chief Observer for his statement. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Haberard. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the press, today I will have the honor to present the preliminary statement of the European Union election observation to the Republic of Zimbabwe. The findings of the preliminary statement reflect the work of the EU electoral observation mission up to this time. Important parts of the process are still ongoing and the EU UN observers are still deployed throughout the 10 provinces to observe also the, all the remaining steps and stages, including complaints and appeals and the post electoral environment. And of course, we hope the remaining stages will be devoid of violence. This statement is based on the findings and analysis of the EU Electoral Observation Mission Core Team, the long-term observers, as well as the short-term observers that have been deployed all across the country. The first EU Electoral Observation Mission observers arrived in Zimbabwe on the 8th of July. On election day, the mission had about 150 observers deployed both in urban and rural areas across Zimbabwe. They represent the 27 EU member states as well as Canada, Norway and Switzerland and I would like to cite this opportunity to express once more my deep gratitude to all of them for their excellent cooperation and their support. Part of the EU EOM on, on election day was also a delegation from the European Parliament of seven experienced colleagues led by Mr. Andreas Schieder, here beside me, and the diplomats accredited to Zimbabwe. I would also like to thank the observer missions from SADC, from the Anni African Union Commissa, from Commonwealth and from the Carter Center for the good cooperation we had so far. The UOM was invited by the government of Zimbabwe and uh, an administrative arrangement was signed between the European Union and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. This agreement stipulates also access to all electoral stakeholders and also the information relevant to the electoral process. Unfortunately, this was not the case with the official voters. This is unprecedented in uh, the history of the UEOM. As part of this agreement, the UEOM is committed to provide an independent and impartial long-term analysis of all aspects of the entire electoral process. In the course of its work, the UEOM conducted over 1,600 meetings with participants of the electoral process in urban and rural areas. The UEOM addressed the strict code of conduct and uh, our observers do not interfere in any way in the electoral process. The UEOM has assessed the legal framework, the work of the election administration, the political environment, including the campaign of parties and candidates, and we also assess the participation of women, the national minorities, and other marginalized groups. The mission conducted a very comprehensive quantitative and qualitative analysis of the most relevant broadcast and print media, as well as the social media sphere. The legal framework could provide, for fact, an adequate basis to conduct elections in line with regional and international standards exposed by Zimbabwe if implemented properly. However, the EU Delegate Election Observation Mission concludes that curtail rights and a lack of level playing field led to an environment that was not always conducive to voters making a genuine and informed choice in Zimbabwe's 2023 harmonized election. The passing of uh, regressive legal provisions 
and acts of violence and intimidation resulted ultimately in a climate of fear. The violent arrest around uh, 40 members of ZEST and the ERC on the 23 of August adds to our brave concerns. Both organizations are respected and are credible human rights defenders and part of the global network of domestic election monitors, GNDEI. They are also exposed by the European Union. Both organizations, I would like to remind these aspects, are accredited citizen observer organization and exercise their constitutional rights. A police statement of 24 of August said that it was for coordinating the alleged release of election results. Ultimately, the elections fell short of many regional and international standards, including key principles of equality, universality, transparency, and accountability. The election was also hampered by significant issues regarding the independence and the transparency of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, ZEC. The ZEC missed opportunities to increase public trust in the integrity of voting and to result management. The initial failure of ZEC to provide critical electoral material, notably paper ballots, which resulted in many polling stations opening with severe delays <coughs> late into the night or next day, led to an increasingly intense atmosphere in some locations. This was mainly observed in urban centers like Arara or Bulevayo, but also in Manica land. Overall, the EU UM commands, however, the large number of voters who remain in queues for extensive times to exercise their right to vote. The communication regarding delays, its reason, and the actual voting hours was insufficient. UEM observers assessed the election day as generally calm. Voting was assessed, assessed positively. However, I would like to stress on the fact that uh, unauthorized individuals, for example, members of the Forever Associates in Bauer, fast tracked voters at nearly one fifth of the polling stations we observed potentially indicating pressure. UUM observers also saw flyers that were falsely informing voters of electoral boycotts by CCC, which may have trust some of them. The UUM noted the central role of the judiciary in the process, given the unprecedented high number of pre-election court challenges pertaining to both right to contest and the validity of the all key legal texts some of which remain still nowadays unresolved. Many UOM interlocutors convey that the trust in the judicial system is low. Although others were of the choice of political alternatives, the overall inclusivity of the candidate registration remained limited. Undue registration criteria and sex inconsistent and discretionary implementation and an unreasonably high fee and sex demand for US dollars cash payments created obstacles to inclusivity. For example, the registration fee for a presidential candidate uh, was uh, 20,000 US dollars, while for national assembly candidates, the fee was $1,000. One fifth of all aspiring candidates were rejected. And this number, this amount of money, was a 20-fold increase compared to the previous elections. The UEOM uh, took also note of a low participation of public candidates. While tax for electoral preparations went largely according to schedule, court disputes over candidate registration caused delays in ballot printing and also impacted postal voting. Nevertheless, that promised repeatedly that all systems are low. This was not the case on election day and resulted in a second day of voting. Furthermore, ZEC did not consistently address public concerns related to constituency boundary delimitation, voter registration, candidate registration, as well as ballot security. For instance, the final list of polling stations was only made public on election day. Voter registration was a significant point of contention. ZEC did not publicly disclose details prior to the election on its, of its efforts to verify the accuracy of the voter registration data. Before elections, ZEC did not provide fully analyzable electronic copies of the voters' role to civil society. The campaign presented voters with a range of viewpoints, 
but there was a lack of a level playing field, particularly regarding the freedom of assembly, which was unduly restricted by arbitrary implementations of the maintenance of peace and order act, the so-called NPO and POA. Police used the force to disperse several opposition gatherings and in some instances of intimidation and violence took place, including one killing. The UN's uh, media analysis revealed similar shortcomings. State-controlled media allocated substantially more airtime and crews based the ruling party and President Gangawa and government. For example, the UN media analysis revealed that state ZBC devoted uh, over two thirds of its news and current affairs coverage to Zanoviev, the president and the government. The BC owned the radio stations, gave the ruling party almost all their election related airtime. Digital rights are restricted by law, notably online freedom of speech, access to the internet, access to information online, right to privacy and data protection. This resulted in fear and self censorship. <coughs> Manipulated election related content was also circulated widely on social media and traditional media, negatively affecting voters' ability to make informed decisions. The EU election observation missions deplore an extensive and sustained disinformation campaign against the EU, EOM, and other international observer organizations by some media and social media platforms. These unacceptable attempts are to discredit the mission and are seen as a blatant disinformation of the Zimbabwean public. They do reflect the continued effort to undermine the European Union electoral observation mission and credible election observation. The UUM will present a final report with a comprehensive analysis in about two months this report reflects also the UUM's assessment of the entire electoral process. At the same time, the UUM will make recommendations for future electoral processes, and those recommendations, of, four, of course, will be for public consideration. I thank all of you for your attention. Thank you, and I pass the floor to Mr. Andrea Schiller, head of uh, the delegation of uh, the European Parliament. Thank you. My name is already said, my name is Andrea Schiele and I'm member of the European Parliament. It is my pleasure to address you today on behalf of the parliamentary delegation. Uh, before doing so, I also want to express my big thanks for this excellent and good cooperation with the other electoral observers, uh, especially those from the African, uh, different African organizations. We, we are seven members of the European Parliament representing a large political spectrum and coming in upon six different countries of the European Union. We have been present during these significant days for Zimbabwe as a part of the European Union election observation mission. And we take note of the late arrival of the invitation to observe these elections. Nevertheless, we are here to perform our work as we do everywhere in the world because our presence was requested by the Zimbabwean authorities. First and foremost, I want to express our full endorsement to the finding presented today by my dear colleague and friend, the Chief Observer, Mr. Fabio Massimo Castaglio. I thank him and all the team for their work and cooperation. During the past few days we have been here, we met with national authorities, candidates, party representatives, religious leaders, civil society organizations, and media representatives. And the Chief Observer already has given throughout an overview of the mission's preliminary findings, and I therefore wish to focus on those issues that we, as elected politicians, consider as crucial. Let me start by stressing two very important points for our delegation. First, there are the crackdown and raids that led to the arrest of 39 people from local observer organizations in this very hotel, which were from Sesson and ERC. As subscriber of the Declaration of Principles for Election Observation, we strongly condemn these unacceptable attacks against citizens observers, which are considered by the European Parliament and globally human rights defenders. 
CESN and its part is part of the GNEM, the Global Network of Domestic Electoral Mission, uh, Election Monitors, and it is considered as an independent and credible organization. To make it clear, the European Parliament asked for their release. The second point is the extensive disinformation campaign against international observer organizations, especially the European Union National Observation Mission. We are reminded that the EU EOM was invited by the government to conduct an independent assessment of the electoral process. And as this is said in the pre preliminary statement, the election fell short of many regional and international standards, including equality, universality, universality and transparency. Besides being largely peaceful, the electoral campaign was severely affected by the Patriotic Act, adopted just last month, and the discussion about the private voluntary organizations bill. According to our interlocutors, these have led to a severe shrinking of democratic space, including for the exercise of freedom of expression, association, and assembly, but also to the self-censorship of civil society and the media. In the course of our meetings, we often heard complaints about the lack of transparency of the independence of SEC. Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. We were also told that it did not provide effective and timely information during the electoral campaign, in particular covering uh, concerning the voter roll. Moreover, in the past couple of days, our observers noted that the results management processed by SEC lacked verifiability and traceability. And we regret that SEC did not receive our delegation despite several requests from our side and taking in consideration that the substantial technical and financial contribution the European Union gave to this election. Equally, several local actors with whom we spoke expressed a serious misgiving, misgivings concerning the independence of the judiciary regarding the resolution of recent electoral disputes and candidate exclusions. We all agree that democratic we all agree that democratic competition should always take place on a level playing field and on fairness. No candidate or party should have unequal access to state institutions, resources and media. And we were also reported of misuse of state resources and public office. For example, salary increases for civil servants and support measures for traditional leaders during the electoral campaign. And in addition, we were informed that the state TV broadcaster has been biased in favor of the party in government. An incumbent also benefits from a minimally regulated political finance framework, as it is currently the case in Zimbabwe. Furthermore, the inclusiveness of the process suffered for the 20-fold increase of the registration fees for presidential and parliamentary candidates. We also heard that for the settling of these fees, a payment in U.S. dollars was demanded in most cases, and very often in cash. And information that had previously not been given to those who wanted to register. And this meant that over one-fifth of the candidates were denied registration. We also deplored that women made, le made up less than 50% of all registered candidates. And compared to 2018, where four presidential candidates were female, this time only one was able to run only through legitimation. We believe that the next government should facilitate improvement on this front and on many others. During election day, I cannot start without stating, turning to the election day, I cannot start without dating the office. These elections were challenging and difficult. Our delegation split into three teams, and uh, one team observed Harare, another uh, Marondira and its surroundings, and another one in Chinchoy. We would like to practice uh, to praise the passion, resilience, and the democratic aspirations of the citizens of Zimbabwe, who spent several hours queuing to cast their vote. In several districts, including the capital Harare, papers for the local elections arrived with unacceptable delay, with the opposition alleging the delays disproportionately affecting the strong, their strongholds, as assessed by the mission's statements. The atmosphere of the election day was relatively peaceful. 
but that this tends largely due to the extremely late arrivals of some ballot papers, but also due to the behavior of party activists who place tests in the premises of the polling stations to make names, to take names of the citizens at the entrance and the exit of the polling stations. In a number of cases, polling stations open dramatically late, while some having to close down again shortly after due to lack of ballot paper. This problem occurred frequently in urban areas, while rural areas had received sufficient amount of ballot papers. The conditions for people waiting in the line to fulfill their civic duties for many hours were quite dire, given heat and lack of shade or water. We also experienced rising frustration of many voters while waiting to cast their vote they found out that their relatives in the rural areas had already voted. We observed that when tents were used as polling stations, it made voting more difficult and challenging for both staff and voters. Voters were still wait, waiting to vote until late at night, and they were highly frustrated, complaining about the disorganized nature of the elections. Better preparation of the election day by the Electoral Commission could have contributed to reducing many problems and resulting tensions. This being said, we would like to extend our sincere thanks to the thousands of Zimbabweans who work as polling station staff. They did their best to ensure that the proceeding ran as smoothly as possible. Above all, on behalf of all the team, I would like to express our, our admiration for the civic spirit and the democratic aspirations shown by the people of Zimbabwe, who went to vote and were ready to spend an entire day and maybe also an entire night waiting in line to fulfill their civic duties. This, the presence of political agents in the police station is also considered quite constructive. I would now like to refer on the post-electoral period, moreover, clear Conclusive result must be announced within the electoral deadline. Ensuring transparency, traceability of counting will strengthen, will strengthen confidence, confidence in this day. This is critical and said to be fully transparent in the tabulation and publication of results. Any dispute regarding the electoral process should be addressed peacefully according to the established legal procedure. And it is also crucial that the judiciary shall perform its constitutional duties in an independent, in impartial manner. And finally, I would like to underline that the European Union, including the European Parliament, stands ready to support a reform process in Zimbabwe. A reform process which is inclusive and democratic and works to ensure a stable and prosperous future for all its citizens. And in this respect, we are available to provide our assistance to ensure the best possible implementation of the EU EUN recommendations. Thank you for your attention. I open now the floor for questions. Uh, please introduce yourself by name and also let us please know the media outlet you work for. Do we have, uh, where do we have questions? We have one in the in the in the middle. We have microphones, but it might take a moment uh, to get through the crowd. Thank you. Uh, I wouldn't stand up uh, just in respect of my colleagues who are taking by the footage. Um, I mean, having listened to your summation, my name is Calvin. I am a journalist with uh, the Namibian newspaper. Having listened to your findings, what then is the conclusion? We're in a position to make that conclusion now since this is a preliminary statement. But the question is, is it a fair and free and credible election as far as you're concerned? I would say we do one by one. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. First of all, let me remind uh, uh, something very important. This is uh, not in the mandate of our mission to do a certification of elections. What is uh, our mandate, what is uh, our commitment, is to observe the elections and the whole electoral process 
uh, including the pre-electoral and the post-electoral one. That's why we deployed also uh, long-term observers in the country. And of course, to check if uh, the way in which elections are held and managed comply with the uh, regional and international standards. And uh, in that regard, I think that our statement in this preliminary statement and also my words previously have been quite clear. Unfortunately, what we observed in the remark is that uh, in many significant and fundamental aspects, uh, those elections fell short in the respect of those uh, regional and international standards. Of course, uh, in two months, around more or less two months, we will uh, also publish a final report that will analyze in detail uh, the phases that we already observed, but also the following one that are still pending, notably the tabulation, and notably also uh, an announcement of uh, the results and all the post-electoral uh, phases, eventual also legal agreements that could be also raised, uh, raised by uh, the stakeholders involved. And in that capacity, and that report, we will also uh, propose some recommendations that we will submit to the competent national authorities, hoping that it could uh, be helpful and could foster also a political debate within the country. And in that regard, I share what my friend Andrea Schida just said. That we hope that uh, there will be a possibility for inclusive democratic transparent reform and if that will be, that will be the wish and the will of uh, the political authorities of the country, the European Union will be ready to assist in that regard with the technical assistance. So, thank you. Next question. I don't see... Okay, yes please, back there. <coughs> from Jens France Press. Uh, given what you have observed, do you have any confidence that the results to be announced will accurately reflect the will of the Zimbabwean people? Let me say that uh, an electoral observation mission should not try to forecast the future. We are here to observe what will happen. And uh, therefore, in our preliminary statement that we underline, uh, those aspects of the procedure in which we feel that uh, the competent bodies and ZEC notably uh, were not uh, fully respecting the provisions of the internal legal order, but uh, we do not want to make any kind of uh, provision. We will just see what will happen and we will see if their actions and uh, all the next steps of the procedure will comply or not with the regional and international standards and of course with the national legal framework that is uh, applicable to the next stage of the procedure. Thank you. Um, do I see more questions? Please raise your guest all the way in the back, please. Uh, my question is, your preliminary report all but condemns uh, the, this plebiscite <coughs> and effectively uh, creates a context for um, a contestation around the result. And references will be made to this preliminary report, although you say you, you, you come after two months. Two months is a long way off. So much would have happened on the basis of this preliminary report. What do you think should happen? Because you've, you've, you've all but condemned the plebiscite. I'm sorry, but uh, we are not doing any kind of condemnation here. Yeah. We are just reporting what our observers have seen and heard all across the country. I'm speaking about 150 extremely professional and experienced observers with many missions on their back, and on the basis of these data, not second hands, not rumors, but objective data that has been reported by our people on the ground, we drafted an accurate analysis with what is what the situation is. It is on the basis of that analysis that I'm asking that and 
the, the summary of it is that this, these elections are not credible, so the outcome will be contested. The summary of this, gentlemen, are that there are significant parts of the procedure that were not respecting the international principles. Of course, I do agree the fact that we still have to observe the final phases that are still ongoing. You are aware of the fact that some police station uh, just end up their operational votes early this morning. I mean, there was a significant postponement on uh, many polling stations all across the country. And uh, of course, we do reiterate the hope that uh, any kind of uh, grievance, any kind of appeal, any kind of uh, contestation will be done in the legal framework foreseen and without any kind of violence. This is, of course, the hope of the Electoral Observation Mission. And at this stage, we cannot do any other additional remark exactly because the procedure is still going. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, yes, we have a question back there. Thank you. My name is Monica Cheru. I'm in Zimbabwe now. I would like to ask if the EU is not self-contradicting. On one hand, you are talking about WESEC and other stakeholders have failed to fulfill their mandates based on the Zimbabwean law and constitution. And then in the same breath, you are challenging laws that were constitutionally passed in Zimbabwe. I don't know, does that make sense? Like the POV and the whatever, the acts that you spoke about. Those were constitutionally passed in Zimbabwe. Are you not choosing to play with the Constitution when it suits you? Well, I'm a bit uh, surprised of uh, your comments. Let me say why. Uh, we do fully respect the sovereignty and the independence of Zimbabwe, but uh, when it's up, of course, to uh, manage an electoral observation mission, we should also see how the internal legal framework comply or do not comply with international standards that are relevant. And in that case, not simply us, but uh, a very significant number of uh, stakeholders that were in touch with us, that, uh, that we met, they were denouncing and were sharing with us their deep concern about the fact that the so-called Patriotic Act reduced the space of our public debate. They felt somehow the, a certain uh, environment of fear and tension, and some of them, they were even afraid to meet us, exactly because they didn't want to uh, face the risk of uh, legal consequence of this. And of course, we would have not fulfilled our mandate if we would not have reported what has been shared by us and what uh, has been observed by our observers in that regard, also comparing with the previous legal framework. That's uh, the element that we simply underline, and I do repeat that every analysis is based on objective elements and is based on a clear comparison with the regional and international standards. Thank you. We have a question here. The back and then uh, the lady in the pink head. Thank you so much. My name is Pranashima from Swiss Bank. If I got you right, you indicated that the Zimbabwe courts are not that So if I got you correct, you indicated that uh, the Zimbabwe courts, the legal the legal system in Zimbabwe is not that uh, uh, <laughs> and also, some of the observations indicated that the legal system is not independent. And here you are, you are saying that if there is any contestation, people should call the legal government. Do you think they call the legal government? Zimbabweans are going to get the uh, intended result. Thank you. Thank you very much. To, I would like to stress 
what I did say in my speech, that I said that uh, the stakeholders, the participating participants, express their doubt and concerns about the trust they will do a happen in the judicial system. This is not our evaluation, this is the evaluation of the person we met, and they felt that the fact that uh, many uh, legal cases are also were concerning those elections in terms of uh, the candidacy has not been solved before the elections, also did not give a contribution in that uh, trust. That's uh, what they share with us when we have um, uh, our meetings, and I would like to remind you that there were a very significant number of meetings, 1,600 all around the country. So I think uh, that gave us uh, a good basis of data to assess in that regard. And uh, of course now we will uh, observe very carefully that uh, uh, judicial dimension eventually, if there will be, of course, fields of cases of a judicial challenge of part of the procedure, and where people are accustomed to being present in the courts, following each one of those procedures, as well as still today present, following also the case of the rest of the around 40 persons from ZEST and ERC, and they will uh, observe very, with a lot of attention, of course, uh, all the following parts for their cases. Um, thank you. My name is Rumi Daichi Zarura, and I'm a freelance journalist. You noted that um, female participation in our politics in Zimbabwe was a bit on the low. Um, are there any reasons that you managed to observe to why um, there's low participation from women? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, in fact, uh, um, when we met uh, uh, many stakeholders from the civil society, but also uh, some parties, they express uh, a certain doubt about uh, the reform of quotas. Because if on one side they introduce formally quotas that are fixed by the law within uh, the National Assembly, on the other hand, it seems statistically that if you look at the candidate in the ordinary constituency, we have less women candidates than five years ago. And somehow there was the impression that uh, uh, this system could have cut off ties between the electors and the elected. This is something that uh, many of them shared with us. Of course, I think uh, the statistics uh, are not positive because we do we truly believe that the participation of women in politics as candidate and in general in the political life of the country is a pillar, really one of the fundamental aspects of a healthy democracy. And uh, we hope that in general there will be in the future a uh, very important debate in the country in uh, thinking what could be the possible best reform means to ensure that this participation will grow up instead of decreasing as it happened in this election. Thank you. Do we have a question in the middle? Okay. No, if not, then uh, the gentleman... Yes. Yeah, she's, she's coming next first, the gentleman here, and then uh, the lady in the back. and you make recommendations. But in your findings, do not explicitly state the elections were free, fair, and very good. And given that reality, why should Zimbabwe's own works of life take your recommendations seriously if you do not state your position or send an observation on this election side? Thank you. I think I uh, already answered to this question, but I, I will try to explain even better. I do repeat that uh, no electoral submission mission, not, not the one from the European Union, not the one from uh, our African friends and counterparts like the African Union or SADC or the other partners like Commonwealth or Carter Center. None of us is entitled by methodology to give a certification on the validity, on the fairness, on the freedom of elections. This is 
against our methodology. The methodology seen, of course, to have observers all across the country to be, collect as many data as possible in a coherent way, and then after that, of course, to try to see if the part of the procedure are complying or not with the standards. And that we have been very clear. We told you positive aspect, aspect that we observed, for example, that generally the election selections were calm, but we also had to underline the aspects in which the procedures short, fell, fell short from what it was foreseen by the regional and international standard to which Zimbabwe is adhering. Therefore, uh, I think that with this element, each one of you can formulate its own judgment, but we are, an analysis is crystal clear, and I think uh, that having taken account all the different parts of the procedure, having taken account the legal framework as well, the media the environment, having taken account the election day, but also the campaign phases, we have done uh, quite a substantial uh, uh, work very, with very solid ground, and I'm also happy to see that in general, taking also into account the meetings we had with the other missions and uh, also the public statement, I can see that there is a, there is a certain agreement in many aspects of uh, that has been problematic on the procedure. So I think that this is strengthening, of course, once more the germinity uh, and uh, the good job that's been delivered by the mission. Thank you very much. My name is Yvonne Chaka. I am a freelance journalist. My question to you is that after you produce your report, and given that uh, institutions like ZEC refuse to meet with you, do you see any of them taking on your recommendations and improving the state of relations in Zimbabwe? Thank you. I really hope so, in the sense that, of course, uh, for a mission uh, as um, trying to do all this is best in terms of professionality, in terms of engagement. It is important and uh, it is, uh, of course, uh, a matter of uh, also really hope for the future of the country and for this vibrant, strong democratic participation of the people to see that there will be a, a will to engage in the reflection. Of course, I would like to reiterate that this is a free choice of the Zimbabwean authorities. We are just providing elements or reflections coming from our analysis, coming from the international standards, to ensure that there will be the possibility for them uh, to enrich the national political debate in that regard. Then must be a will, a political will of the new government, a political will of the new presidents to and of course a political will at the technical level of get of ZEC to engage or not. As I told you before, we deeply regret that so far we didn't see the cooperation we expected from uh, those national bodies and from ZEC. And uh, I think that uh, that uh, was really unexpected uh, and uh, sad taking into account that we have been officially invited by the government and uh, with the uh, we already provide as European Union and a very significant, important technical and financial assistance. But nevertheless, we are still positive and confident, and we hope that, uh, of course, to see progresses also in those that uh, relationship. And eventually, of course, we really hope that we do our best uh, to ensure that uh, the final report will give a rich uh, set of uh, fruitful, interesting recommendation, and if there will be they will engage from outside, there will be the maximum support that we will uh, to keep to grow, to give a personal contribution in that regard. So we have time for one more question. It's the gentleman in the white shirt. Yes, my name is Andrew. I just wanted to find out, you do not say that the 2023 elections are better than the previous in terms of the more practice and the violence it is to see. And also, what are the positive or positive things that you can say that happened in this election which it did not happen before? Or what would you say that 
perhaps the EU oil and the other international standards met uh, those standards. What are those that are positive? Because for now what we have heard is the negative part of the site. What about the positives that you meet the international standards and also meet the EU OM observer target? I thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, as, I, as, per, as per our methodology, normally we do not uh, do comparisons with the previous elections. <laughs> that we are doing in the sense that every election has uh, this context, political, as environment, but as you have remarked, in some parts, of course, we explained where we have felt that somehow there was a certain uh, progression in terms of uh, political space of debate, in terms of uh, political freedoms, in terms of uh, right of assembly, for example, in terms of uh, the way in which the procedure was applied. I would like uh, to say in that regard uh, that uh, I would also do positive remarks. I underline many times that in general the environment that our observers found on the ground was uh, calm. They felt they were experiencing sometimes tensions but not uh, not several episodes of violence, for example. That's what we underlined. And this we underlined that the, in general the assessment from a large part of the police station was positive, but also we had the cases of those police stations that has been significantly delayed in some cases, uh, even, uh, even uh, almost one day later. And of course, in those cases, they also experienced a certain level of uh, uh, tension, frustrations from the people that had to wait so many hours, in some cases, even one whole day, one, one night, to uh, exercise the right of vote. So, um, I would say, also that uh, I could add to these remarks that uh, the secrecy of, of, of uh, the vote is also something that uh, generally was in short and uh, there were positive remarks by our observers in that regard. But of course, as we do say and comment and somehow underline, as well as there are aspects we do not deny the critical parts that uh, I have extensively already explained. So this is all done in a uh, in the spirit of very objective analysis based on data. Thank you. Thank you very much for attending this press conference. Uh, I close this press conference now. You will find the preliminary statement, the press release, and the fact sheet uh, at the entrance. Uh, you will see us again in about two months with uh, the next press conference that we present our final report. Thank you very much.